Part 1. You will hear a conversation between an agent from City House Services and a customer who wants to have her house cleaned. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 4. Good morning, City Health Services. How may I help you? Good morning. I'd like to arrange to have my house cleaned. Certainly. I just need to ask a few questions. First, could I take your name? Yes, it's Barbara Hill. Thank you. Next, is your house in London? Yes, it's in Kingston in southwest London. OK, southwest London and... Uh, What's the postcode? SW105. And what is the square footage and what rooms will be cleaning? The whole house is 268 square feet and there is no need to clean all the rooms. I only want to have my bedrooms cleaned. OK. How many bedrooms does the house have? Three bedrooms. Oh no, sorry, we, we used to have three bedrooms but we only have two bedrooms now. Are those single bedrooms or doubles? Doubles. Fine, two doubles. There's one more room which needs cleaning. It was used as a bedroom before and now we have converted it into an office. I understand. Three rooms have got to be cleaned. And are all of those rooms upstairs? Yes. Then downstairs we have a kitchen diner, conservatory and lounge. The kitchen diner is quite large and has the usual equipment, cooker with oven, refrigerator, cupboards and worktops. The conservatory has a lot of plants, but there's no need to take care of them. The lounge has a leather three-pea suite and a large coffee table. Thank you. And do you keep any pets? Yeah, I really love keeping them. I've got two dogs and three cats. OK. Then if our staff come over to offer the service, please take your pets away. Uh, have you looked at our service packages? Yes, I have one in front of me. Excellent. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. Any extra services you need? Switching bed linen, working the garden, clean the glass in the conservatory, that kind of thing. Uh, no. Uh, actually, replacing the bed linen, yeah, that would be good. No problem. I'll just make a note of that. How about curtains, mats and carpets? What would you like us to do with those items? The curtains. I'll have to think about that. I think we should have the carpets cleaned really well every quarter. Mats can just be done with the laundry. Of course. How about clothes? We can have our staff wash and iron them, or we can have them taken to a dry cleaner. Washing and ironing. No, just ironing. That'll be OK. OK, fine. I know quite a bit about what you want now. I should let you know that we're located on 12 Amy's Road. That's A-M-Y-E-S. Mm. And we work on from Monday to Sunday, except Tuesday and Wednesday. Could you let me know when is convenient for you? Next Friday. Uh, no. Oh, that's no good. My son invites his friends over in the afternoon that day. Perhaps next Thursday or next Saturday? Let me check. OK, next Thursday. When is it convenient for us to come over and provide the service? Is it OK if we come in the morning? 
Or we may come in the afternoon. It depends on your schedule. I'm okay with any time. Just give me a call to let me know you're coming before you arrive. Sure, we will. By the way, how long will it take for the service? We usually work one to three hours for house cleaning, and the work will take three hours at most. And of course, if it takes more than three hours, you should pay extra for it. Uh, fine. So let me just do some calculations. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You hear a club leader giving information to a group of young people who are planning to do a two-week holiday course at the Tamerton Centre. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to fifteen. Now listen and answer questions 11 to 15. Hello, everyone. I've been asked to talk to you this afternoon about next month's trip to Tamerton Study Center for the two-week course. Now, some of the things I'm going to say you may have already heard or read about, but I think it's important to emphasize a few key points. First of all, it's worth reminding you why Tamerton was set up in the first place, in the late 1960s. That was really before all the concern with preserving the environment, which everyone talks about these days. The idea was simply to get people out of the cities and into the country, and to find out that just being outdoors can be very rewarding. This is not going to be a holiday in the usual sense. It's called an adventure course because you'll really be stretched to your limits, but that in itself can be a positive thing. The group I took last year, for example, said that although they actually felt pretty weak and exhausted all the time, <laughs> it really made them learn a lot about themselves and increased their confidence. And in the end, that's the most important thing. Now, all of you knew about policies at Tamerton before you signed up for it, so you know that in many ways it's quite old-fashioned. You don't have a lot of choice in what you do. But something which I think makes the place so special is that you get to try so many different things every day. For instance, one day you'll do climbing, and the next you'll be surveying rock pools. It's not intended that you become an expert in any of them. It's more like a taster, which you can follow up if you want. And there isn't a lot of free time. Organized activities and talks, etc., go on until 9 p.m., and lights go out at 11 p.m. There are table tennis tables with all the equipment and board games, though I have to say... The pieces often go missing, so it's a good idea to take your own. There's a DVD player with a good selection of films suitable for this age group, so don't take yours. Bedtime at 11 p.m. is strictly enforced, and there's a good reason for this. You're all under 18, and we organizers need to know that all group members are accounted for in the house as we close for the night. And, of course, you'll be so exhausted anyway that you'll be too sleepy to want to cause any trouble. Now you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20.
Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Now, what should you pack? The information sheet tells you a lot about what clothing to bring. But what about other things? Well, Tamerton House has its own small shop. But anything there is several miles away, so you won't have many opportunities for buying supplies. So in this last part of my talk, I'm going to explain what objects you should take with you to the center, what you can take if you want, and also, very importantly, what you cannot take. Several of you came up to me before this talk and asked whether you can take things like kettles or hair dryers. The answer is, there are plenty of these electrical appliances available in the center and they are of the proper voltage and are checked regularly. Yours may not be, so the rules at Tamerton say you can't bring them into the center because it's considered a fire risk. Remember, it's a very old house. Now another question was about cell phones. Although you definitely can't have them on during inside talks, you equally definitely need them when you're out on exercises. So they're a must, I'm afraid. Anybody who wishes to talk to me about borrowing a phone for the fortnight, please see me after this talk. Now, the weather's heating up at the moment and you'll be outdoors a great deal. If you wear proper clothing, especially a hat, sun cream is optional. Also, they sell high factor cream in the shop, so you don't have to take any of your own unless there's a special kind you use. Now, there's a special note about things like deodorants, which come in aerosol cans. I need to tell you that these are banned in the center because apparently they have the habit of setting off the fire alarms. If you want to take an aerosol can, you'll actually be at risk of being told to leave. And finally, people have been asking about whether they need to take towels. Well, the center does provide one towel per guest, which you're required to wash yourself. If you're happy with that, then don't bring another. If not, take one of your own. Just remember how much outdoor exercise you'll be doing and how dirty and wet you'll be getting. You might that is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a female student inquiring about changing her course. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Hi, my name is Rosanna McLaren. Um, I'm a bit early, but I have an appointment to see the assistant registrar, Andy Matthews, at 10 a.m. Hi, I'm Andy Matthews. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. My tutor advised me to come to see you about changing my course. Yes. I've had an email from your tutor, David Vine. Let me just call it up. Here we are. It says, Tutee Rosanna McLaren is on the Wednesday part-time course and wants to change to the distance learning program. Have you any problems with the course itself? Oh, no. I love it. I think the course is really worthwhile. 
The theoretical sessions once a week on Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. are really good. You have two two-hour sessions then? Yes, that's it. And I have to say, I think the practical session from 4 through to 9 in the fashion workshops are also good fun. But I am finding it all very tiring, and it makes me too exhausted for my work on Thursdays and Fridays. You work the other four days of the week? Yes, and some Saturdays. I see. So, what do you want to do? I'd like to change to the program with the distance learning component instead of the Wednesday sessions. Yes, that is a possibility. I see from your tutor, Dr. Vine, that he has no problem with this, but you realize it's possible you'll have a different tutor. Yes, I'm aware of that. It's a shame because he's a very good tutor. What do I need to do now? First, we just need you to fill in this transfer form and the claim form for the reduction in fees. Oh, I didn't realize it was cheaper. Oh, yes. It's a thousand pounds less a year. It gets even better. Can I start the distance learning program from now? I don't see why not. I just need to get a signature from your tutor, which should take only a short time. I'll email it to him now, and then he can sign it and put it in the internal mail. Okay. But I also need to go through with you what is involved in the distance learning program to make sure you are clear about everything. Well, I understand I attend the weekend course once a month and that I can book a bench in the fashion workshop at any other time. You have a computer at home for the distance learning? Oh, yes. I have the necessary equipment for making video calls over the Internet already. It's the flexibility of the distance learning over the Internet that is very useful. And what makes it even more interesting is that I don't have to spend a lot of time traveling to and from the university on the Wednesday. I can adapt it to my own routine, as I will be able to do the theory over the Internet from home when I want. The same is true of booking a tutorial online using Skype. Yes, it is amazing, isn't it? It's in its infancy, but it's been up and running for a year now, and it's going rather well. Can I just ask if it's possible to have a face-to-face -face tutorial at any time as well? There is no reason why you shouldn't be able to. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen carefully and answer questions 26 to 30. What about the assessment for the distance learning? I take it that it's the same as for the other program? Let me see. Each month you are expected to keep a written course diary and to present a seminar paper and at the very end of the course there will be a written exam which will account for 30% of the total marks. What about the coursework? How much does it account for? The design portfolio, which you need to present at the end, accounts for 50%. I would point out just one thing, and that is that on the distance learning program, some tutors like to see the design portfolio twice each term to make sure you're on the right track. But of course you can take it in at any time to show your tutor. And as part of the assessment for the portfolio, you have to present at least one fashion item at a fashion show at the end of the course. Is there anything else? No, that's it. Thank you for all your help. No problem. Hope it all works out well for you now. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part four. Part four. You'll hear a lecturer talking about the reintroduction of grey wolves into the wild. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to forty. I am going to talk about one of my favourite animals today, the grey wolf. Similar to other top-level predators like the shark, wolves sometimes have a bad reputation. It is true they do sometimes attack herds of livestock that people depend on. In nature, however, grey wolves are a critical part of the ecosystem. Wolves are larger than the average dog. They also have a keener sense of smell since they are not a domesticated species and still live and hunt in the wild. They hunt in small packs and actually have a sophisticated social system. Scientists have observed that wolf packs are well defined by hierarchies. There is one hierarchy for male wolves and one for female wolves. At the top of each is an alpha male and an alpha female. They are not leaders of the pack according to the human definition. But they seem to have special privileges compared to the other wolves. This privilege has to do more with reproducing rather than having more food. Any pair of wolves in a pack may breed, but is usually the alpha pairs wolf pups that are the most successful. Other pairs may not be able to raise their offspring to maturity, especially when there are limited resources. The alpha status among wolves is not permanent. Wolves are free to challenge the alpha male. These challenges are not necessarily physical fights, but are mostly ritual confrontations that involve bluffing and posturing. There is always the potential for violence, though, and sometimes the jockeying for the alpha status is fatal for one of the participants. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions. The range of the grey wolf and its subspecies used to be quite extensive, almost the entire continents of Asia and North America, and the whole of Europe as well. They are now found mostly in Canada, Alaska, the northern reaches of Eurasia, and a few other scattered pockets. In some parts of the world, grey wolves have actually been reintroduced into the wild. Many people were opposed to these programs at first because they thought it would cause economic hardship for livestock owners. In the United States. Local ranchers around the Yellowstone National Park area refused to allow any wolves back. Supporters of the program knew that without cooperation from ranchers, the wolves would likely be shot and killed. Those supporters knew how important the program was and agreed to compensate ranchers for livestock lost to wolves. This important compromise paved the way for the reintroduction of wolves to Yellowstone in 1995, where they hadn't been seen for over 70 years. The reintroduction has been a great success. Studies show that the biodiversity within the park has increased and is sustaining itself. After the last grey wolves in the park were killed in 1926, the population of elk and deer soared, decreasing the number of plants available to beaver and moose. The beaver eventually became extinct there. The population of other predator species, like the coyote, exploded. This, in turn, Caused rodent populations to crash. This crash led to a decline in bird species like hawks and eagles. These negative trends have all reversed since the wolves came back. As a result, Yellowstone National Park is a better, healthier place. 
The local economy also benefits because people are not only interested in seeing more biodiversity at the park, but also the wolves themselves. This brings in tens of millions of more dollars annually to local lodgings, restaurants, and stores. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.